Hey there, so today I thought it would be fun to go through some Unity optimization techniques that uh, you hear around to see how much impact they actually make and if they're even worth using. I've just set up this uh, little test bay here. All right, so the first one up is send message. When I first started Unity, I found this send message function and I'm like, whoa, this is super convenient. As long as you've got a reference to the object, you can just call send message. But uh, as you hear time and time again, send message is not good practice and it's slow. Uh, in the first test here, I've got, uh, it's gonna be running send message. In the second test, I'm going to be grabbing the uh, component directly and then calling, calling the function directly. All right, so let's run send message and we'll do max iterations. And there we go. So as you can see, get component is two times faster than send message. And on top of that, I mean, you also get the class ready to go. So, so we can now manipulate and uh, call other functions on this class if we want. Whereas send message, you have no idea. You're kind of just like shooting in the, in the dark. Uh, there's no way to check here to see if the, this object that we've got actually has this function. Uh, there's really no reason to use send message ever, right? Like you should always, you should always just grab the class. Well, at least I haven't found a good reason to use send message. Maybe someone else has and you could uh, leave it in the comments. I'd be interested to know. Okay, next is the intern call caching. I've just started using Writer over the last few months and I had no idea this was even a thing, but every single time you try to use transform, if we just decompile this here, you'll see that it's actually an extern call. So basically this is uh, them shooting this across to the C++ side um, and then it would shoot back and then we would get our transform. So for example, if we were just doing this in an update loop, right? Uh, this would be three calls to the C++ side and then back again for us to get the position, rotation and scale. So a more favorable way of doing this is caching it locally and then grabbing it from that cache. But an even better way is to globally cache it and then uh, and then grab them from the global cache. And I will show you. So if we do 900,000 calls, so as you can see, there is actually a decent difference here. Uh, fully caching it is two times as fast as not caching it at all. So yeah, this is 900,000 calls. Uh, so that honestly, the, the difference is not too major. Like if you're talking about something like 3,700 calls, uh, you're looking at, you know, not even one millisecond. And uh, I highly doubt you're doing that many uh, API calls to the to the Unity API per, per frame. So, uh, you know, <laughs> take it with a grain of salt. Don't do it for performance. Do it for maybe just the reason that you could possibly rename this to T or something and make your code a little bit shorter like that. And a lot of people don't like doing that. They like descriptive names, uh, so do I, but uh, you know, performance wise, it's not gonna save your game. Okay, so this next one is interesting uh, and interesting because it goes against what I see everybody suggesting. And that is that you should not use vector3 distance, right, in this top one here, because inside here, if we decompile it, it makes use of a uh, square root, which is known to be slow. You should use this alternative here, which is just a simple square magnitude. Uh, but according to all of my tests, it is like one or the other. Okay, so 900,000 calls, uh, square root is actually faster there, slower there, right? Slightly slower there. They're honestly neck and neck. Uh, so there, to me also, this is far more readable than this, right? The, this distinctively tells me, I'm trying to find the distance here. So when it comes to distance, in my opinion, just use vector three distance, scrap this square magnitude nonsense, uh, because it's, it's simply just like not routinely faster. Sometimes it's slower. Uh, obviously I'm, this is one simple test, right? With, with, uh, hard coded numbers here while well, these are random, but you know, there could be a time where square magnitude might be faster, but I have not found it. So there you go. Okay, so this next one is quite interesting. Uh, find objects. So on startup here, uh, when this test starts up, all I'm doing is just generating a bunch of objects. So you can see under here, a bunch of trees. In the tree, there's a bunch of layers. And then in the layers, there's a bunch of objects. On the objects, I've got them tagged find, and I've also got this find helper, which is just an empty class. So in this first benchmark, I'm just finding them by tag. In this second benchmark, finding by type. So let's do, uh, that's right. So this is actually very slow. So uh, I'm doing recommended 1000 iterations. 
as you can see, it's quite slow. And there we go. Find object of, of type is significantly slower. So I actually don't know how these work behind the scenes, but someone in my Discord made a good point in that find objects with tag probably just looks at the transform level, checks the tag and says, yep, good to go. Whereas the find object of type probably has to go through every single object, looking at every single component, right? The transform, whatever else, else it's got, sprite renderer, image, uh, collider, all this stuff, going through them and then finally returning it. So it has to do an exhaustive search of every single object of every single component. So uh, that would make sense why, why it takes so much longer. So yeah, after seeing these, so let's let's just maybe do 4,000. Probably gonna be waiting for a second. 4,000. Let that load. I've actually got a WebGL build of this. And if you did this amount on WebGL, it would absolutely crash your browser. There we go. So <laughs> final object of type took 18 seconds to do 4,300 of them. Uh, so yeah, my recommendation is never use these two functions in any game loop. Definitely not in update. I honestly wouldn't even use them in a in a state change on like a turn-based combat game, right? Because they're, they're honestly so damn slow. Usually there's a better way to find your objects, right? Have them uh, in a list of some kind on a manager or any, any number of things. The only time I would ever say uh, use this is once on the initialization of your, your classes at the very start of the scene in Startup or Awake. That is the only time. Uh, otherwise avoid them like the plague because they're, they're super damn slow. Okay, so this next one is very interesting as well. It's about using the non-alloc versions of the uh, physics functions. So for example, here in our benchmark one, we're using, we're grabbing the results of physics overlap sphere. Okay, and if we uh, just have a look here, I've just got a, uh, Golly gosh, I've just got a bunch of uh, colliders in this area here. And uh, when we click it, it's just gonna overlap sphere and grab them all. And in the second benchmark here, we're actually using overlap sphere non-alloc and we're sending in our pre-made uh, collisions array, right? So it's just gonna be reusing that same array instead of creating a new one and returning it to us. Uh, let's see how that one goes. Let's use max iterations. Okay, apparently I said that that should be the maximum, so let's do that instead. And as you can see, the non alloc version is slower. Let's actually do a little bit more than that. Something like that. Yeah, so, you know, it's coming in close to almost double uh, the speed, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't use it. So let's actually remove the normal one, the overlap sphere one, and let's head back into Unity. Okay, so let's press play and let's open the profiler and we'll run the non-alloc. So then this will be calling the actual non-allocated version. Um, and let's call it again and again. As you can see, there's no garbage that's being allocated, which makes sense, right? It's, we're using the non-allocated version. So now if we just swap those, like that, and now we're using the actual uh, normal version, the allocating version, and we press play. Let's run that. We will see here that it just allocated 38 uh, MB of uh, garbage, right? So obviously uh, arrays are reference type, so it goes straight to the heap. And uh, when that goes out of scope, eventually the garbage collector needs to come and pick it up. So let's just uh, run that again. Yeah, 38 MB of uh, garbage. So yes, the non-alloc version is slower to run, but it doesn't generate any garbage whatsoever. So yeah, you really just need to know, do I want it to be super, super fast or do I want to allocate no garbage? And in most cases, you're probably going to want to not allocate any garbage. So this one will win most times, right? But uh, everybody's game is different and you might not give a damn about garbage. You might just care about the speed. Okay, the next one, camera access. Now, whenever you see any code snippet of someone using camera.main in update, you will absolutely see the next comment of someone saying you shouldn't use camera main in the update function, which is fine because that's what we're all told. But then just recently, actually, I was making a tutorial and I was caching the camera just like this here. 
And someone made a comment saying, you don't need to do that anymore because Unity now caches it. Uh, I thought, oh, that's cool. But then I tested it and there's still some weird results. So let's just run this. Let's do max iterations here. And you can see using camera main, Find with tag is obviously slow as we've discovered that. Find object of type is even slower. Uh, but as you can see, caching the camera is still superior. Uh, and if we look at camera main, we will see that it is still an extern call. So it's still going to C++. So they may have cached it, but they've cached it on the C++ side. So if for some reason in update, your uh, calling camera main 53,000 times, uh, you're only gonna lag for eight milliseconds, right? So calling it one time or even 2,000 times, you're not even, it's not even gonna slow you down by one millisecond. Okay, link versus loop. So everybody says, don't use link in Unity ever. Uh, I think that's bullshit. I think you certainly should sh use link, uh, but ensuring that you use link in the correct places and at the correct time. So let's just run this link loop. It's saying 1000 max iterations or else we'd be here all night. Okay, so link is obviously the slowest here. We've got uh, for loop, which is faster, cached for loop, which is faster still. I'll show you what that is in a second. And uh, a for each loop, which is even faster. Now I'll show you the code. So uh, we're just making a uh, list here of this, which is just an int and a float. And all these tests are doing are just filtering a little bit and then adding to a list. So this link one is just checking that uh, this int value is more than this threshold here. And then it's just selecting all of the remaining ones uh, float value. These are doing the exact same thing, just with, just with loops. Uh, so as you can see here, we're looping through them all. If it is over the threshold, then add it to this list. This cached for loop uh, was actually just caching the count. Okay, so, so instead of having data.count here and doing it every iteration, we're actually ca caching it. My buddy just wanted to check to see if that actually makes a difference. I was curious too. And it actually does. It always seems to be just that little bit faster. Uh, and then the for each loop. So for each is generally faster if your for loop has to access the uh, index of the array more than once. So if you're only accessing it once, for loop will always be faster, uh, twice or more, you should probably use a for each. Uh, but yeah, so I built this and I put this in WebGL and these numbers are all back to front. So <laughs> in the editor is completely different to your built WebGL game. Who knows if it's a built standalone game, I might be different still. Uh, I would be really curious uh, if you guys wanna go to the WebGL and run these yourself and tell me if any of these are different to what you found here. It's really weird. I, I really wanna know what, what, what is up with that. Uh, also, my friend did this test in both Edge and Firefox, drastically different results. So shit, man, it's like super hard to know what is performant and what is not. And the very last one here is String Builder. Now, I know I've done a few community posts saying you should definitely use String Builder. I uh, just wanna show you why. So here we've just got a phrase, subscribe, which you should do, uh, account 100. So we're gonna basically do subscribe 100 times in a string. So this top one is just simple concatenation. We're just uh, creating a string, concatenating to it. The second one is using a String Builder, uh, looping, appending, and then finally to string in it. So if we run this now, uh, max 3000, just so we don't lag, you'll see the difference is ginormous, right? So let's actually do a bit more than that. Let's do 13, oops, 22, why not? Uh-oh, it's a lot of string. So yeah, absolutely use a string builder, not just for speed performance, but also for garbage allocation. Uh, string builder is the way to go. Unless it's just like two things. If you're just concatenating two things together, do it, who cares? Uh, but yeah, use a string builder otherwise. Um, and I've actually got this one last one that I wanted to show you, which is order of operation. So the idea is just that floats are more expensive to do arithmetic on than integers. Vectors more expensive than uh, floats. Quaternions more expensive than vectors, so on. Uh, so you should order your operations in that logical order, if you can. So for example, this top one, it's float times float times vector. Uh, this next one is float times vector times float, and then vector times float times float. And if we run this, let's do max iterations. 
you'll see that it is actually two times faster. Let me just give you a little example of this in action. So let's say transform position plus equals, uh, let's say you're wanting to move left um, and you're doing time speed times time dot delta time, right? You even see this in the docs. If you go look through the docs, you will see uh, Unity uh, doing this. So this is an example of doing it incorrectly, right? This is vector times float times float. So this would actually be two times faster if we flipped this to the other side. So yeah, just keep that in mind. And if you go to this link here, uh, you will see that Unity themselves actually do recommend it doing it this way. So yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoyed uh, these as much as I enjoyed making them because I thought they were quite interesting. If you've got any other uh, benchmarks that I should add, let me know in the comments and I'll add them here because I'm, I'm interested to uh, make an exhaustive list. And yeah, that's it. See you in the next video. Bye.